Hi, welcome to the second Weta Workshop School at Mass University Facebook Q&A for today. Um, my name is Tim Croft, I'm the International Manager for the College of Creative Arts and I'm joined today by Paul Tobin, Art Hi, Director at Weta Workshop and Tanya Marriott, Hi. Senior Lecturer at Mass University. So today we're going to talk about the new program um, and I think the, probably the best way to begin is by actually talking a little bit about what entertainment design is and how that fits in with the Master of Design. Right, so um, so yeah, my, I'm an art director at Weta Workshop, um, but I'm also a concept designer and obviously um, in the context of this master's course, uh, entertainment design is the is basically the concept design and visual work that we do to um, build a body of work towards film, television, game, and sort of more recently actually um, location-based experience. And that's that could be museums, exhibitions, or even theme parks. And and so that's that's kind of what we're talking about when we're saying entertainment design. I guess if you've seen lots of movies, played tons of games like me, um, any of that kind of stuff is, you know, there's someone designing it. And so that's, that's kind of what we're talking about. And in recent years, entertainment designs had quite a shift into slightly more serious um, subject matter, where it's no longer there just to just to entertain us, just to excite us, but to actually um, give us really meaningful experiences and teach us a lot more about social, political, environmental conditions. Um, and so it's those really interesting narratives that underpin those entertainment spaces um, that we're really interested in developing and helping students to design concept for. Um, those are the, the sort of spaces that make really meaningful experiences. Um, and so that's really the, the foundation of this new master's program that we're running. Yep. Okay, so we've re received a few questions prior to today's session, but also if you have questions, um, please feel free to submit them in the comments section and we will endeavor to answer them as we go through today's session. So one of the, the main questions that we've been asked a lot about is the portfolio um, and how to put a portfolio together and what you guys are looking for in a portfolio. So All right. we've suggested 24 to 35 pages. Can you tell us what you'd like to see? Right, where to start? Um, basically with a passion project, ideally, I think uh, with these kind of um, submissions, you know, you're going to be spending a year um, exploring um, a project and um, hopefully a project that really interests you. You don't have to have all of the answers, eh? You, no. you just have to um, have something that interests you. So what we're looking for in the portfolio is both um, students that have actually already worked in the industry of, as concept designers, uh, but also students that are really interested in the design process and want to actually learn how to become a concept designer. So we're looking at both levels. Um, within your portfolio, uh, what we really would like to see is groupings of work. And so you might have several different projects that you've worked on, both projects that you've developed yourself, also ones that you might have done as part of your job um, or as part of your study. Um, but we want to see collections of work, so several characters, environments, props, um, and elements that are all related to each other, so we can see your creative thinking around that body of work. Um, we're also interested in seeing, um, it doesn't have to be static work, we're looking at images, uh, also video, um, and sculptures. Um, if you've got sculptural work, just make sure it's really well photographed and the images are really high resolution. Um, if you've got video work, um, you can either embed it into your PDF or have that as a link to your Vimeo or YouTube account. We can have a look at it from there. Yeah, I think the the main thing is we just we're looking we're looking to sort of see. Um, what your technical skill is, yep. um, but having said that, as you're, you're pointing out, you know we don't. We're also looking for people that might be wanting to start in concept design. They yep. may may have uh, maybe and may have worked as an illustrator before yep. or an animator, but they have some some creative skills and they're wanting to sort of now shift more into concept design. Yeah. Um, so that's a, that's I think that's an important point to make. Yeah. So within the portfolio, it's also a combination of final work, um, so your final rendering, and um, there's been a couple of questions around. Do we need to know the software that the work was generated and that's actually really helpful sometimes we can't sometimes we can work it out but sometimes we don't and it, it helps us to understand what programs you might already be using um, we're really happy with people submitting analog work if they've got hand-drawn work or hand sculpted work um, we'd like to see some of the developments so with those little clusters of, of um, projects um, it'd be great to see the final work but also your development process so right through from sketching through to your iterative development and then the final piece so that's going to pack out quite a few of your pages in your portfolio. 
Okay, so in addition to the portfolio, uh, applicants also need to supply a CV mm -hmm. and a research proposal. Yeah. So again, what would you like to see from the perspective of the CV, but also the research proposal, probably the most important thing? Yeah, so the research proposal is where we've had a lot of our questions. Um, and so at this stage, think about the research proposal as a speculation or a, um, a kind of a... Um, an introduction to what you would actually want to look into. So with any of the films or the TV um, shows or games that you've um, been watching or disseminating or consuming, um, there'll be things in there you find really interesting. So why are the characters designed in a particular way? How do I make a character more empathetic? How do I make an environment more immersive? Um, how do I deal with um, uh, robots that might look a little bit kind of uncanny or a little bit awkward in relation to the human counterparts. So underneath all of these kind of questions and musings are a theoretical framework. So in this instance what we're really wanting is for you to speculate what your project will be about and what you're really looking at and in inquiring into. And then within the first um, couple of weeks um, if you're accepted into the program we'll help you to flesh out that portfolio, help you flesh out that um, research proposal. Um, and help you to work out what is a, what are the theories that are under, underpinning that project. So I wouldn't feel really daunted by the research proposal. What this really is is a stake in the sand as to what you're really looking at at this stage. Um, and then we're going to see that in relation to your portfolio and just kind of see where you're thinking you want to be. Yeah, I mean it can even be in some instances too a, a case of it might be reinvention. Yeah. You know, you might be looking at um, retelling the classic story of Frankenstein yeah. but in a, in a modern day setting yep. and you might have a particular social take on that potentially or yep. it might be uh, you might have a, a completely original story mm -hmm. of your own. A lot of the work that we focus on I mean, in entertainment design often is a combination of story, character and world and so um, I think as long as your research proposal is sort of it's um, hitting those is, marks. yeah, is looking yeah. at something interesting in those areas, and more importantly, I do think you need to be thinking about the medium that you're going to express yeah. your masters in. Um, you don't have to literally make a film or no. make a game, but you need to be designing the um, foundation and, for yeah, it. Yeah, for the foundation for it. Yeah. So um, I think that's the other things. Like, like for instance, and I'm just going to use a little quick example. Um, we've got obviously a few of us at Weta worked on had the pleasure of working on District Nine. So, so that's a science fiction film set in um, our world, and uh, I guess the but the in interesting thing about it that Neil, the filmmaker, was trying to make the kind of social contemporary mm. issue was um, a commentary on refugees coming into South Africa and how people felt about that mm. and how they were being treated. So that's so I guess it, in some ways that's the you know you, in terms of research and the research proposal you could argue that that film would be looking at refugees yeah. and, and the current state of South Africa, Johannesburg, yeah. but then doing all this body of science fiction work and design work to support an, a, a work of fiction. So that's just one example. Yeah. It could be a, a, you know, it could be a stylized game. It could be a, a Pixar style, you know, animation. It doesn't mm. have to be gritty realistic. It can be yeah. stylistically very quite varied. And I mean the classic one was with Avatar we're looking at eco-fiction narratives and looking at um, human centric narratives in comparison to the narratives of, of creatures and what we regard as the other. Um, so there's a, lo a romantic notion around the alien and how we present the alien that's quite different to how we see the other or indigenous people um, within our real life environment and so again Avatar is kind of talking about this. So it's these sort of threads that are, that are the kind of the thinking behind why you're designing what you're designing that's what we're really interested in knowing a little bit more about. Um, but you can kind of you work this out as you're going along if you're accepted into the into the program we'll help you to build cohesion around this as you go along. Yeah I think it, that's the important, important distinction to make is you're not your portfolio and proposal is not offering up this is my finished project. No, it's a proposal. It, it really is just saying, this is the area that I want to focus in, yeah. and here's some of the interesting questions that I want to start to answer. Yeah. But that's that's it. Yeah. And, and and just circling back on that portfolio, we're, we're very happy to see, um, you know, to your point, if you've got professional work um, that might be related but not specifically <coughs> concept design, yeah. you know, feel free to put that in there because yeah. it gives us a sense of the kind of artist that you are. Yeah. Um, but if you do, but when ideally we want to sort of see some work um, in the area that you're actually wanting to pursue as well, yeah. if you can. Yeah, cool. Absolutely.
Okay, so um, tailing off that, what will the actual year look like for a, an, a, an applicant that is successful and enters into the program, like when will the program start? Mm -hmm. What will their day-to-day -day look like? And also, what will the year look like for them as they go through the program? Okay, so students will come in as an intake in mid-September. Um, there'll be a small cohort and they'll be working in a studio-based environment at Massey. So the first um, couple of weeks is really familiarising yourself um, with the research process, um, working out what your research proposal is going to be, um, the types of support that you're going to need for your project, um, and then we immediately jump straight into Weta, where we go into an intense week at Weta. So the yeah, following on from that, we've got what we're calling the the Weta Grab Camp, which is um, a chance for our students to come and spend a week on site at Weta Workshop. You won't be sleeping there, obviously, <laughs> um, but but you will be there probably till quite late. Um, and so this is a chance um, for us to basically um, give you kind of like a crash course on how Weta designs and works on a live project. And so what we're going to do is we're going to come up with a cool project which we're going to work on as a team um, and build it up and work it through. And so the idea is that at the end of that week, um, you'll have a really good understanding of the process of concept design and some of the areas that you might want to focus on for your own project, but also just to get a chance to have a look at Weta yep. um, in more detail, meet some of the, you know, you won't be, you'll be meeting more than just me, yep. um, and get a chance to actually um, soak up some of the inspiration vibe of Weta Workshop. So then after that you'll come back to Massey and so then you'll have the rest of the year um, with Paul and I um, as your primary supervisors um, and we'll also have critique moments and touch points where we go back to Weta and we have access to other Weta staff who are specialists in an area that will be related to your project so you can get support in that space. Um, then there's also going to be an opportunity to go back to Weta to actually have some live work experience. Yeah, so we're also part of the program as, a, as an internship and so um, in the first half of the year, sometime in the first half of the year, <clears throat> we'll take two students, two to three students at a time, and um, they're going to actually be based in our studio at the um, at the workshop, and you'll be working on a live um, job, um, and you know with the rest of the team, so that you get a first hand experience um, on what it's like to work on a, an actual film, television, or game yeah. uh, game job, and that's that obviously will give you a chance to. Um, you know, maybe formulate, hone your skills a little bit more. Learn about the industry. Learn a little bit more about the industry, yeah. yeah. So that's a, it's a chance to get some sort of really um, pertinent experience in yeah. entertainment design. So the last part of the year is really about building mastery in your work, and so this is where you're going to be really fleshing out your project. It's about your practice-based work, so it's really about how you design and how you make things. Um, and then the research document, which is um, a written document, is there to support the, the, um, the practice-based work. So it's a small written document that contextualise and support um, what you're actually doing. Um, so everything will wrap up um, in, in September again. Uh, where you'll have a presentation, uh, where you'll, you'll um, present your work to a, um, a panel of, of, of um, assessors, uh, and then we'll wrap everything up with a final exhibition and then graduation. So that's, that's pretty much what the year looks like. Um, a weekly um, sort of outlook for a student, um, you're going to um, be mainly self-driven, but you're going to be working with your cohort, so you'll be working directly with your peers um, and also the other master students um, that are located at Massey. Um, local students can work um, and do work part-time usually, um, you can work sort of 20 to 30 hours um, and so what we do is we structure our contact points around um, uh, what, what the needs of the students are so if you've got a job we can kind of work around all of that as well. Um, there's a question here, um, Tim, about Australian citizens. Yep, so um, an Australian citizen or a New Zealand permanent resident pays New Zealand domestic fees. Um, those for the program will be between seven and nine thousand dollars, roughly, yep. depending on uh, the other things that you enrol in. Uh, for an international student, the fees will be thirty-three thousand six hundred New Zealand dollars, approximately. Mm -hmm. um, there are scholarships available, however, for students enrolling in these programs, particularly the Massey Master Scholarship, which is worth fifteen thousand New Zealand dollars. Mm -hmm. Students need to enrol and have paid their fees to apply for that scholarship and be enrolled in the program. Um, and it's um, often helped by supervisors. Yeah, helps. supervisors work work through, and we've had quite a lot of success with that scholarship with our students. Um, and there's so, also, oh, sorry. Yeah, there's I was just going to say there's a couple of questions here yeah, as well. Yeah, so there's another question from um, from Josh from Josh about CV. So really, Josh, we're just looking at your professional work. So where where you've actually been working before? Um, I always really interested in um, 
other things that students are interested in doing. So, um, you know, the, the, some of the clubs and the groups and the organisations you might have been involved with. I mean, personally, I've got a real great interest in the environment and all of that seems to, the organisations I've been part of seems to permeate into my practice work. So I'm yeah, always interested I in think, that. I think where it becomes, the CV becomes quite relevant is if you are applying um, and to get into the, the, yeah. the one year masters um, rather than as a graduate of a university mm. but coming through on our work ex um, through professional work experience yeah. which Tim I think you might want to talk to a bit yeah. more because that's something yep. which I don't think we've touched on yet so yeah. to apply for the program you need a, a four year bachelor's degree um, so with honours or, or the equivalent so um, in fine arts or design or an equivalent program around the world um, if however you have a three year bachelor's degree or you don't have a bachelor's degree in that area or um, you have significant work experience mm. and a strong portfolio, we can look at accepting you through the program in, in, in that particular way. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's where a CV, you'll be, be wanting to, important. you'll be really needing to um, list the the industry places yeah. that you've yeah. worked, the years that you've worked. The credits worked that you and, have. Yeah, yeah and, absolutely. The, and so we can follow up on references. Yeah. Um, also notice there was another question here from, um, from Amanda, is this program digital based or is there an opportunity for traditional practice? Well, the good news is that this we is love actually, traditional. Yeah, this is your <laughs> this is actually your year. Yeah. Um, and so you can work um, traditional if you if you like. Um, I We're think both traditional and digital practitioners. Yeah. So in both sculpture and and drawn yep. practice, so we can support you in both areas. Yeah. I do think there's. I, I personally think there's a definitely a benefit if you're if you're very passionate about wanting to get into the industry. Um, then I think the industry is very much a digital based mm. industry now yep. so I think there's um, there's a real relevance to learning digital tools um, but just so you know um, if you're submitting traditional work as part of your portfolio or if you're wanting to explore traditional mediums through your project that's totally fine yeah yeah so I think it probably dovetails on our question about how does this particular program differ from other master of design programs around the world but also in, in New Zealand so what makes this program unique how does it look differently from, from what other programs are being offered? Um, well, I think probably the industry partnership aspect of it, um, I would say in some instances, uh, you know, WET has been uh, sort of, we've worked on some of the, the biggest sort of film film pr franchises around. And I think that, uh, I think where this is, the, from my perspective and from Richard Taylor's perspective, we've always wanted to share our experience and knowledge with people um, and we've done done that in different ways over the years, but this is the first time that we've partnered with a mm. university um, with a really great academic pedigree, and we're actually combining, for me, it's an amazing combination. You're getting all this really solid academic, uh, research-orientated skill base, mm -hmm. and then you're getting super relevant contemporary industry and even arguably technology-based mm. um, learning, and we're, we're merging it together into a single one year. So the other thing is the foundation is concept design. So when we talk about concept design, this is the beginning where everything starts. This is where the ideas germinate and become these amazing imaginary worlds that we want to actually consume. And so um, one of the main things I think differs is that it is that front level, it's that uh, cre creative, visual, artistic, design-centric form of making. Um, everything else kind of goes on from there, uh, the process of making that, that continues on, but we're really looking at the front end of where those ideas actually be, get turned into imaginary worlds. Yeah. yeah. I think it's also quite bespoke. Um, that's the nice thing about a master's as well, I guess, but it's it's a lot of one-on-one -on -one learning, mm. and we're customising our, su our supervision and our mentorship to you as an individual, which I think um, is is a really nice point of difference, but you're not getting just one supervisor, you're getting two supervisors, mm. but one from university and one from, from WETA. So yeah. I think that's quite a nice point of difference as well. And yeah. so it's another thing about the program is actually, it's a small, um, it's, it's a, a very small it's cohort. Yeah, it's a bespoke yeah. cohort, so it's not yeah. a large, you're not going to be a large no. one. You're not student, sitting in a room no. with no. 30 other people. No. There'll be a lot of one-on-one -on -one and very bespoke connection with the students, with, with both me and Paul, and also with WETA, the larger WETA community. Yep. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, um, let's see. What else have we got here? There's a question up here actually about um, uh, uh, from um, Siddha. So, um, if anyone's really interested, um, all the information is actually on our website. Um, so, our URL is um, Weta Workshop 
school. School. Messy.ac.nz. Yep. It's actually on our banner on the fa Facebook Live. It's behind me here. Um, I can't see it from here. Yeah. Um, but all the information there about the portfolio and all the requirements are there. Actually, um, maybe yep. you're going to talk about enrollment. Yeah, so the application deadline is the 31st of May, midnight, New Zealand Standard Time. Um, and so the best way to apply for the program is go to www.wetterworkshopschool.messy.ac.nz where there is an apply button where you can click through and there are two steps through the process. First process is to submit your portfolio and submit your CV and submit your research proposal to Slide Room. There's a link to do that. And the second thing which you d definitely need to do also is apply to study at Massey University and there's another link where you submit to do that. Students from our country where English is a second language will also need to supply their IELTS, TOEFL or PTE um, English language score in advance. So we will not offer it do a conditional offer where we're pending your English language score. You need to have that in hand when you apply. Um, you also need to pre supply your transcripts from previous education as well as your um, ID such as a uh, passport or a photo ID. Um, and these need to be verified documents. There is uh, ways to verify your documents on Massey's main website www.massey.ac.nz backslash international. Um, yeah, so you need to supp supply both of those. Once your application has been received in full, we will contact you and we will let you know that you're now being considered for the program. Uh, after the 31st of May, um, Paul and Tanya will sit down and look at the applications and decide a list of who they want to um, accept into the program. You'll be contacted and interviewed mm -hmm. um, prior to being accepted into the program, which will begin in mid-September 2018. Yeah. Um, one other question that's come through is about people looking to study um, next year or the year afterwards, for example. Um, so what, would you, what advice would you have for people who are thinking about potentially studying in the future? Well, this is a pilot scheme and we're really excited to be running it this year. Um, and what we'll be doing is documenting the processes we're going along um, and we'll be sharing um, the journey of our students um, online to everybody who's really interested in having a look. Um, we'll have a graduate show in November, so there'll be an amazing opportunity to come and have a look at all the graduate work. Um, and that's often um, online as well, so you can see um, the graduate work online. Um, so they'll give you an indication of the types of projects that are created and um, then what was actually designed. Um, and all of the projects, when they're finally assessed and, been, um, and the students have actually graduated, they then go into the library. And so you can actually search for those documents um, through the Massey Library System and have a look at um, their research thesis and their practice-based work. So that'll all be documented for future students to have a look at as an example. Yeah. yeah. I think the other big suggestion is watch tons of films, play yeah. heaps of games, <laughs> go see lots of museums and exhibitions, yep. uh, and and draw, 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 yep. and um, and just have fun. I Consume think, and, life. Yeah. yeah and, go and, to the and, zoo, and, go to the beach. Yeah, and just start to... <laughs> start to you know think start to think and doodle and explore mm. some ideas around what you might want to explore because it's a pretty unique um, situation you know a whole year of exploring a personal project mm. but with with some pretty high-powered professional advice mm. and, and tutoring so I think that for me that's the main um, the main thing that I think you'd be wanting to do is you know make sure that when you submit that portfolio next year that is as good as it can be, mm. and um, chock full of, of really amazing inspirational stuff. Absolutely. Okay, well it looks like just we've just about finished, so before we wrap up, is there anything you'd like to add about the program, about applying, um, that we haven't touched upon today? Probably, the only thing is, I know uh, some people actually often ask me what's the difference between concept art and concept design. Uh, I think for the purposes of the industry these days, there's no real difference. Mm. Um, it's just an interchangeable term. Um, so. The main thing is that if you don't really know quite what it is, um, but want to know more, then certainly jumping onto artstation.com mm -hmm. is just, that's where a lot of the industry now hangs out. Yeah. Um, and there is just literally tens of thousands of, of images of people's concept design and yeah. concept art. Um, the other well, one term's a little bit more speculative and one's a bit more tangible, but in this sort of front loading where you're actually trying to speculatively look at a world, it actually doesn't really matter. Yeah, in some and I, I think the, the other thing you could do to help um, try to work, understand more about the process, especially if you're not familiar with, um, well, for, familiar with it, is to potentially just grab, you know, where the workshop's done a bunch of um, art of books now around films we've worked on, mm. which really, we really cover the process from start to finish. Yeah. But there's a ton of great books out there from lots and lots of good films and games and even some television series now 
So I would just say pick up some of those books um, or watch some behind the scenes documentaries and that will probably give you a really good understanding of what we're looking at. So I've got one last little element about um, the portfolio and the types of students we're wanting to get in and types of visual work. To be honest, the aesthetic doesn't actually really matter. We're interested in students that might be working in hyper-realistic characters and worlds, but also more pop surreal, lowbrow or more animated um, environments as well. Uh, we're just doing a lot of work in game these days and so there's a whole variety of different aesthetics that we're really interested yeah, in. Yeah, it doesn't have to be live action. No, really well. no, no, no. Yep. Cool. Cool. Okay. Alrighty. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Cool. Thanks, guys. See you guys. See you Thank later. You. There's one more question. Oh, oh one, one more question. question. One more lucky one. Where's that? Where's yeah, the question? I'm just wondering. Where's it gone? It's... Yeah. We've got one more question. <laughs> From off camera, what does it yeah. say? What's the off question camera? Lucky <laughs> last. <laughs> right, so this one here. Do the soup that one there? <laughs> Do the supervisors have a benchmark level of technical drawing expertise they are expecting? Practicing three D professional here and B grade concept designer, so wondering how good my two D needs to be to be accepted. Just put in your portfolio. Yeah, yeah. I, you've put got in nothing your best to lose. Work. You've got nothing to lose. We'll yeah. look at everything. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. we're really keen to see your work. Thanks for your question. Yep. Okay. Great. Thank you. See you later.